Hey, everybody, welcome back to Earth Sky. I'm David Dalian, and we've got a really interesting topic for you today. We're going to talk about bonobos and something called compositionality, which is an aspect of language. And there's a special part of that that only humans use, or at least that's what we thought up until very recently. It turns out bonobos are using the same technique. So it's only us and the bonobos. Anyway, today we are going to be talking to the woman who has worked all this out. And her name is Dr. Melissa Berthe. And she is uh, an animal specialist. She studies communications at the University of Zurich language-like communication of animals, that is. And her goal is to understand what makes human speech unique. Um, she does field observations of bonobos and something called TT monkeys, which are apparently cute little South American monkeys about the size of a rabbit. And she's exploring to find out how we evolved language. And she's done a paper. Uh, it came out last month. And they're using the same technique, non-trivial compositionality. And she's going to explain to us what that difficult uh, concept is. So let's welcome Dr. Bette. Melissa, how are you today? Come on in. Hi, how are you? Hello, Bienvenue. thank welcome. you for having me. You are quite welcome. Thank you for coming. And I have two questions. The first one is, for people who don't know, could you tell us what a bonobo is? And this is the one everybody wants to know. Do bonobos talk? What do you so think? Um, a bonobo is um, so a bonobo is is a kind of like a chimpanzee, but it's a different species, and um, it's a bit smaller. It lives in in groups where there is a lot of cooperation, and you might know them because they have a lot of sex to ease social tension. So they have a very interesting social system, and um, so because of this social system, we were very interested in studying their vocal communication and so can they talk it's a little bit hard to say but for sure a very interesting and complex vocal system yes okay so a, an interesting complex vocal system ah. okay do you so, still see me or? okay um so a lot of animals use compositionality in their communication and we're going to need you to explain that and more specifically non-trivial compositionality uh, so tell us what those are, and we're going to need an example in from human language, I think, if you've got one. Oh, I think we have frozen here. I think we have a problem with our stream on Melissa's end. She is in Zurich, and we're going to wait and hope she comes back. So essentially, let me see if I can 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 talk about compositionality. What compositionality is, is two different sounds together will add additional meaning, but it's, it's doesn't change the subject. So you could say you, the tall dancer, or you could say the blonde dancer. And when that person is not dancing, they're still tall and they're still blonde. But if a non-trivial composition occurs, you could say a bad dancer. Oh, and yeah. Melissa's back. Welcome back. Okay, so right. I was just saying, hello, hello. Okay, so <clears throat> I was just saying that compositionality is when you combine two words and it creates a new meaning, but that meaning doesn't stick. And I was talking about the dancers, but I'd only got as far as the tall yes. dancer and the blonde dancer. And we were just about to oh, talk yeah. about the non-trivial. So why don't you tell us about non-trivial compositionality? So non-trivial compositionality is the more complex one where you have two words, but um, the meaning of the combination is not just uh, the sum of the meanings. It's more than that. It's one will modify the other. So we, we take the example of the bad dancer. A bad dancer is not a bad person that is also a dancer. It's really bad modifies the dancer um, yeah. word, basically. And yeah. so, so for a very long time, ah, sorry. No, please continue. For a very long time, it was thought that, you know, animals can do a bit of compositionality, but it's very rare in their system. It's always maybe one combination that they have. And most of the time it was considered to be trivial. So this very simple, just the addition of the meaning. Mm -hmm. And it was thought that a non-trivial compositionality was only found in human language. But now we found it in bonobos. Is that exactly. surprising? 
Is that is that astonishing? Were we expecting that? No, we did not expect that. Um, so the thing is, so far we couldn't find this non-trivial compositionality because we had methodology limitations. So it was always easy to say, oh, you know, it's probably non-trivial. It's just, uh, it's probably not um, non-trivial. It's probably just trivial because we had no way of really showing it was complex. But here we have found a way to show it's complex. And, and we have done that in Bonobos and we expected to find at least some compositionality in Bonobos because mm -hmm. the chimps, they have compositionality. So we thought Bonobos probably yeah. have them, right? But what we did not expect is to find that actually they use compositionality a lot because this time we did not find only one combination that is compositional, we find four. And among those four, three are non-trivial, which means that basically like all the, the core types of bonobos are used in compositional structure. Like in humans, all the words are used in sentences is the same right. in bonobos. And they use this non this um, non-trivial or complex compositionality. So it's really like humans are not unique and bonobos also use a lot of compositionality. They build sentences basically. Okay. Okay, so you had to, the first thing you had to do was understand what everything meant. So you created an entire complete bonobo dictionary for those families of bonobos. I don't know what we call them, families? Are they tribes? What are they? Communities. Yeah, communities. communities. Okay, and so you can, you created a bonobo dictionary from scratch. Yes. Tell us about that. And you made a 3D map of bonobo words. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I don't know what else to call them. Uh, so yeah, tell us so all we can, about that, please. We can That's start with the dictionary. So okay. basically, we assume that, um, you know, a call is probably linked to the context in which it is emitted. So if you see that after a call, everybody starts traveling, probably this call means let's travel together, right? So mm -hmm. we we really did like um, collected a very detailed description of the context of emission of each vocalization. So that was a very long um, work because we had basically a list of 300, 300 questions and for every vocalization we recorded we were like okay is the color feeding yes no is it grooming yes no is it resting yes no is there another group around yes no and so on and we had 300 questions like that to completely describe the context of emission of each call and then from that we could just see okay every time there is this vocalization this is happening or the color is doing this or so on and so this really allows us to really map when there is this vocalization, this is happening, and so create a kind of dictionary. Mm -hmm. We have a list of calls and call combination, and we know what they mean. Basically. And, and, and you were able to derive those from the context. So if they're grooming each other and they make this noise, it means that, and if they put those, okay, I think exactly. I got it. Exactly, oh. yes. Um, so it's just about correlation, you know. There is this vocalization, this happens, it's probably the meaning. Uh, okay. As long as it's it's always the case, um, and then from that we just basically we 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 looked at the similarities between mm -hmm. when calls are emitted alone and when they're emitted in combination, and we did a bit of math looking at like how different the combination is from um, mm -hmm. the elements, and using some linguistics um, criteria, we were basically able to see for each combination. Is it more or less related to the meaning of its part? And so is it compositional or not? And if so, is it trivial or non-trivial? So this okay. is this kind of 3D mapping you were talking about. It's a bit statistic, right. but basically we can we can just see like that the similarities um, in meaning. Yeah. So it allows you to draw the context, literally to draw it in a three-dimensional space and see how these utterances, words, if you will, relate to one another. That's that's exactly. really cool. Okay. Exactly. Do you speak bonobo, Melissa? <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Um, so no, I don't. Uh, I mean, I can understand them now. Um, oh, but you know, okay. there are always subtleties that you never completely grasp. And I think we will need to work a bit more on them to completely fully grasp everything that is happening and everything they're kind of talking about. Um, but mm. I cannot make the sounds myself, definitely oh. not. They have like a very different, you know, they can produce calls that travel like one kilometer in the forest. I cannot do that. <laughs> no, I can't do that either. I've tried. It doesn't work. Okay, so does so here, let, let me then ask this. What is the difference between high hoot, low hoot combination and the Yelp grunt? One is non-trivial and one is trivial. So kind of you walk us through that. Yep. Yeah. 
I think it's just a very nice example of what is trivial composition 19 printables and what is non-trivial. So in the trivial one, so the very simple one, we take a Yelp and the Yelp is basically um, an order. Let's do this. And we take a grant, which is a kind of a look at me, you know, um, pay attention to me, but when the other ones are around, when they're in close distance. And then they combine that into a Yelp and grants. So basically, let's do this, look at me. And this is only when they build a night nest. So, you know, like night nest is very messy context. Everybody wants to build a nest more or less at the same place so that nobody is lost in the forest for the entire night. So they have yeah. to recruit everybody, make sure everybody comes to the same place. Everybody is calling. And basically, they're just saying, you have to do this and look at what I'm doing. It's I'm building a night nest. You have to do the same. So it's just... You know, we just sum the two meanings together. Right. There's there's but no the, there's no greater meaning. There's no synchro synchronicity there. Exactly. It's just let's do basically what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay. Um, and um, in terms of non-trivial compositionality, then we have the high hood, which is uh, pay attention to me, but on longer distance, so really to recruit everybody. And okay. they combine that with the low hood, which is uh, kind of I'm excited for. And when they put them together, high hood, low hood, it's pay attention to me because I am excited. But basically, they do this when um, another individual is aggressing them or when another individual is displaying. Maybe to say, like, pay attention to me because I am in distress, basically. Like, it's really about, you know, one is kind of modifying the other. I think it's like pay attention yeah. to me and the distress is really like, it's why you have to pay attention to me. Come help me. Yeah, that is one's an emergency call, and it's clear that those two sounds together say, "Come now, help." Exactly, okay. exactly. That's, that's yeah. really cool. Okay, so to bring this back to the evolution, how does what does this tell us about human evolution? If the bonobos have it, and we have it, and our most recent common ancestor was, I mean, we don't tell me how did this happen. I mean, what does this tell us about how we came to speak. Yes. That's what so I'm basically um, we now know that if, if chimpanzee, bonobos and humans all have this capacity of doing compositionality, even just a trivial one, it means that the last common ancestor that we share with all those species about 7 to 13 million years ago probably right. also do compositionality. So they combine stuff and it creates sentences. So this is the first take home message. The second one is Trivial, uh, non-trivial compositionality probably also emerged like a long time ago, but we don't know yet if um, it's it's really there or if it was a bit after because we don't know yet if chimpanzee have it. So now oh. it's the next step. See if chimpanzee have this complex compositionality. Mm -hmm. And if they do, then it means it's not a coincidence that humans and bonobo have it. It means it's the last common ancestor. Okay. If they don't, it means probably they evolved independently in humans and in bonobos, but not in chimpanzee. So, so that is the next a, step of our research. Okay, so we, we don't know if it's convergent evolution or not, if they both happen to evolve exactly. the same trait because it's so useful. Exactly. Okay. So what a, your, your, your creation of the dictionary, can we use that with other animal species? Because we know that some animals are using compositionality. It's, mm -hmm. it's trivial, but maybe birds or whales. Yeah. Whales are the ones I'm thinking might... You know, what yeah. how can we expand this tool into the kingdom of animals yeah actually we're quite proud of this method because we think it can actually be used to any like on any species but also any system not just vocalizations it could be used on gesture facial expression body postures and and to see whether like there is a meaning in all those create mm -hmm. maybe dictionaries um in like the entire animal kingdom and then see where where there is compositionality and where there is trivial or non-trivial one. So maybe we will find that actually non-trivial compositionality is actually super common. It's just we didn't have the method so far. Yeah. It is a possibility. We are looking wow. forward to see if people you know replicate this on other species. That would be super interesting. So we're on, we're on the verge of becoming Doctor Doodle and talking and walking and squawking with the animals. <laughs> this is the dream of a lot oh, of my colleagues, yes. including myself. <laughs> I think this is just fantastic. Okay. So I think this is the most important question, and it's do these findings mean we should change the way we think about animals and language? We're back where we started. Are the bonobos talking? Are other animals talking? I mean, it's it's they're not just grunting and 
they're they're communicating with yes. distinct meaning, aren't they? They have a very subtle and complex communication. And I think the main thing that um, we should keep in mind is that human language is maybe not that special. It's really about like it's a set, basically, it's a package of capacities. And the right. more we investigate animals, the more we discover that those capacities are actually shared by a lot of other species. So maybe in humans, it's a bit more complex. Maybe only humans have all those capacities. But basically, we're still not that unique. And we can still see that we are the product of evolution and we really share a lot with all those animal species. Yeah, we really are a product of our environment and we are very much yes. similar to the rest of the animal kingdom. Exactly. exactly. Melissa, this has been fascinating, really, Thank truly. I, I applaud you for your work. This is, I think, Thank you know, you. this is going to be fundamental to expanding our ability to understand animal communications. Can't thank wait you to so see much. Whales are saying. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We'd love to have you back when you've got something new to tell us about the bonobos or maybe the TT monkeys or the chimps. Yep. That's, that would so. be my pleasure. Yes. Oh, thank I you. Would love, it. I would love it. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you guys for joining us. If you got anything out of this, please like the video, subscribe, come visit us at earthsky.org, and you can sign up for our newsletter. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Melissa. Remember, guys, it's one earth, one sky, earth sky, and I will see you next time. Thanks.